Bruchem Aboim, thank you very much for coming. Um, this may be, I'll be, I'm not sure, may well be the last of the Gematria series around the letter Tuf, and uh, which has a numerical value of 400. We'll see there are other special Gematrias, but again, this takes care of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the main numbers. Now, the number Tuf, again, as I mentioned, is the 22nd letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It has a numerical value of 400. The number 400 is an expansion of the number 4 and its symbolism. The number 4 is the original number that conveys the concept of space where something is either in place or out of place. 4 transposes into 400 and gives the, a, the expression to this concept in terms of dimensions and distance. The individual space of a, a man if we call as Dalit Amos, Amot is four square uh, Amot, which is approximately seven feet square. The symbolic dimension given for the national space of the land of Israel is an area of 400 square parsa. The letter Tuf is formed by joining a Dalit to a Nun. Uh, Dalit has a numerical value of four, Nun, 50, so 54 which is a number of sedras, portions, in the Torah, in the written Bible. Also spells the word don, to judge. Just, just law on earth is actually a reflection and impression of higher spiritual law. The two letters, Dalid and Nun, are the two middle letters of the God's name of kingdom. We do not pronounce God's ineffable name, his name of mercy, the yud ke vav ke. Instead, we say Hashem, or Adonai, which means master. The Aleph and the Yud on either side of the Dalit and the Nun allude to righteous, godly justice. The two letters, Aleph and Yud, the miracle value of 11, allude to kindness, which should be exhibited in judgment. The letter Tuf is found enlarged in the book of Esther. As I've mentioned many times, every letter in the Hebrew alphabet is large and small somewhere in Tanakh. It is found in the word Vatik Tov Esther, and Esther wrote, and the first Tov is enlarged in the word Tik Tov, to signify the courage and perfection of character she displayed in her efforts to save the Jewish people, again, in the story of Purim. And just as the Tov is the last of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So too is Esther, the last in succession of the 22 saintly women in Tanakh based on a rokeach. Now the letter Tuf stands for the word emet, which means truth. And unlike the concepts represented by the earlier letters, which had the symbolic letters as their initials, emet is symbolized by its final letter, and this alludes to the nature of truth, that in the final analysis, truth will always prevail. Truth is eternal. However, when even the smallest numerical unit of emet is omitted, namely the first letter, the alif, which represents God Almighty, what remains is mem, tof, which spells the word mate, which means death, based on a maral. Without the alif, all we have left is death. There's no real meaning. This is mentioned in the book of Bamidbar, in the portion of Shalach 1434, where it states that God has hastened, had hastened the spy's journey across the 400 square parsa of the Holy Land in order not to prolong the ensuing punishment of the exile of one year for each day of the 40 days of the trip of the spies of the Miraglim. Now, the most prominent example of the number 400 in the Torah was when Avramavino and Abraham was told by God at the Brit Bain Habsarim and the covenant of the parts that his descendants would be, as it says, aliens in a land not their own, and they will serve them and they will afflict them for 400 years. Now, the portion of Chaya Sarah in the book of Bereshit begins with the death of Sarah, our mother. She died in Chevron, and Avram Avinu made the first purchase of land from Ephron Hachiti of the cave of the Machpelah as a burial plot for her. He, pray, he, me, he paid Ephron 400 shekel for the cave and the field surrounding it. Hebron was also known as Kiryat Arba because of the four righteous couples that would be buried there. 
Adam and Chava, Avram and Sarah, Yitzchak and Rivka, and Yaakov and Leah. Now the name Ephron itself has a gematria, numerical value of 400. He had charged Avram Avinu an exorbitant amount of money for the cave. He was a greedy person with an evil eye, what we call an ayin hara. The gematria of the word ayin hara, ayin ra rather, evil eye, is 400. This concept of ayin ra is also seen in connection with Esa. In the, burn, in the book of Bereshit, in the portion of Vayishlach 33.1, where Yaakov is returning from Lavan's house, and Esau comes out to meet him with 400 armed men. Now the number 400 is also connected to the laws of a Jewish slave, found in the book of Shemot, in the portion of Mishpatim, chapter 21. The portion deals with a slave who, after six years of servitude, decides that he does not want his freedom and wants to remain in the service of his master. In that case, the master must take him to the court, and there the master himself must pierce the right ear of the slave with a martseya, an awl. The word martseya has a numerical value of 400. In the Book of Shemot, in the portion of Kisisa, chapter 44, verse 6, it states, Pokiravon avos albonim, the albane vonim, al shloshim be al ribeim. Which means that God remembers the sins of the fathers on the children until the third and fourth generation. What is interesting is the word al means on, and the word ad means until. So the gemachi of the word al is a hundred, because it really should have said the word ad, not al. So there are those rabbis who say that a generation is 100 years. That being the case, the verse means that God withholds his punishment for three to 400 years. And this would explain why both temples, Bias Rishon and the Bayat Sheni, were destroyed in the 400th year of their existence. In the book of Shmuel 1, chapter 22, verse 2, the verse states that while David was a fugitive running from King Shaul, Shaul he gathered around him an army of 400 men. In the book of Shoftim, the Judges, chapter 21, 12, it states that after the war with the tribe of Binyamin, after the Pelegish Begiva, where the, uh, all the tribes warred against Binyamin, the verse states they found 400 virgins amongst the inhabitants of Yavesh Gilad, who had not slept with a man, and they brought them to the camp at Shiloh in the land of Canaan. In the book of Kings, 1, chapter 18, it tells the story of the contest between Elioha Novi, Elijah the prophet, and the 400 prophets of the Baal during the reign of Ahav and Isabel, which took place on Har Carmel, on Mount Carmel, before all the children of Israel. In the book of Yecheskel, chapter 9, verse 4, it states, God said to Yecheskel, pass through the city, through Jerusalem, Jerusalem." and set a mark of a tuff on the foreheads of the men who moan and groan over all the abominations in their midst as a protection. In the Talmud and Barachot, in the Gemara 20a, it states that the earlier generations sacrificed themselves to sacrifice God's name and were therefore deserving of miracles being performed for them. The Talmud gives an example of Rab Adav Bar Ahava, who saw a kusi, a Kuthian woman who was wearing an ostentatious, <clears throat> excuse me, an ostentatious type of garment like that worn by the ministers of the king. Some say what she was wearing was a garment made with shotness, a combination of wool and linen together, again, which is prohibited. Thinking she was Jewish, he tore the garment off of her body. He was then discovered that she was a Kuthian woman and he was forced to pay her a fine of 400 zuz. In the Talmud in Baba Bastra, 14a, it states that uh, the rabbi said to Rav Hamnuna, we heard that Rav Ami wrote 400 uh, Sifrei Torah, Torah scrolls, in his lifetime. Knowing this was impossible, Rav Hamnuna said to them, perhaps he wrote the verse, just the verse, Torah Tzivalanu Moshe. The Moshe commanded us about the Torah 400 times. What does that mean? There are two opinions. 
one that scribes wrote 400 scrolls for Rabbi Ami. And when they reached this verse of Torah Tzivulon of Moshe, they told him. And he then wrote this verse in each of their 400 scrolls. Secondly, another opinion, the Masha writes, Ravami wrote this verse out 400 times for children, much like having to write sentences on the board. In the Talmud in Gittin, 57b, it states that when the Romans destroyed the Bayacheni, the second temple, they took 400 boys and girls on a ship to Rome. These boys and girls were to be used for immoral purposes. These children, realizing what the Romans wanted for them, knew their fate, all jumped into the sea and killed themselves, rather than expose themselves to illicit behavior. In the Talmud of Odezara, 14b, it states, Rav Chista said to Rav Dimi, we have a tradition that the tractate of Odezara of Avram, our father, was, was comprised of 400 chapters. We have only been taught five chapters. And even so, we still encounter difficulties in understanding it. In the Talmud in Erevin, 54b, it states that Rafraid Prada had a student to whom he would have to repeat each lesson, each lesson 400 times before he understood it. And one day, Rav Prada had to leave and attend to a certain mitzvah. But before leaving, he taught this student his lesson 400 times. However, the student still, still did not understand the lesson. Rav Prada asked the student, what was different about today? And the student answered, and I knew that you had to go, so my attention was diverted. I thought that you would leave at any moment. So Repreta sat down and taught him the lesson again, another 400 times. For this, he was greatly rewarded from heaven. As mentioned in the beginning of this lecture, the letter Toph is the 22nd letter in the Hebrew alphabet. The number 22 is a very propitious number. There are certain specific numbers that draw down the divinity of God, the Shekhinah, in a very special way, such as the number 10 for a minyan, a quorum of men, or 600,000 for the Jewish nation to be able to receive the Torah on Mount Sinai. When God came down to Mount Sinai to give the Jews the Torah, he was accompanied with an entourage of 22,000 angels, another significant number. This may be the reason that there was no tribe in the desert that had less than 22,000 men between the ages of 20 to 60. May God bless us too, that we should be able to experience that which our nation experienced at Mount Sinai with the coming of Mashiach quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and be well. Shabbat Shalom.